Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. This is a special daily editorial because we are getting a video, more presentation update from Skeena Resources. Skeena is traded on the TSX under the symbol SKE and on the OTCQX under the symbol SKREF. I am chatting with the company's Vice President of Exploration and Resource Development, Paul Geddes. Now, Paul has put together a special presentation for us to go through here that provides a comprehensive overview of SK Creek in terms of a 2020 summary of work and some of the key developments on the project, as well as an outlook for 2021. Now, there is a disclaimer here. There will be forward-looking statements made. You all can read over this disclaimer. But, uh, Paul, let's get into this presentation, starting off with some of the 2020 key accomplishments at this project. Take it away. Well, thanks so much, Corey, for having me again, and uh, Happy New Year to you and yours. Uh, well, 2020 for Skeena was an absolutely amazing year. I think the, the first thing to discuss is the fact that we managed to drill 90,000 meters of infill and exploration uh, to de-risk the current resource and bring the inferred to the measured and indicated categories. And we did all of that during a pandemic. Um, the markets are obviously wise to us, uh, and we've been rewarded generously with a 352% share price appreciation uh, just in the last 365 days. And the other key accomplishment, too, is SK Creek is now 100% uh, owned by Skeena Resources. So we managed to uh, basically take the project off of Barrick's hands, and it, uh, it is now 100% ours. The other thing, too, that uh, happened this year is we put out our, our maiden resource estimate for SNP. So it's a combination of indicated and inferred resources there, uh, for uh, quoted at an underground cutoff grade. So we're looking at about 600,000 ounces plus at a uh, very respectable grade, undiluted, of uh, 13 grams per ton, combined, again, between the inferred and the indicated. I think the most important thing to emphasize, though, is that we did all of this um, in the midst of a global pandemic. And I am very, very proud of the entire Skeena team, uh, exploration, sustainability, operations, all of our contractors and consultants. We are currently at greater than 500,000 person hours COVID free. Uh, we haven't had a single case um, at uh, any of our five camps. And uh, yeah, it's just testament to the willingness of everybody to, to be a part of this and being in it together. Yeah, well done, Paul. Way to navigate this whole new COVID environment. And hey, all these companies are dealing with this, but you guys had a lot of work done last year, all during the pandemic. So you were able to move the company forward. Let's get into some of the drilling highlights because last year there was a nice balance between some infill drilling and true exploration drilling. Take us through some of the highlights, please. That's great. Well, what I'm going to show you here is just some of our highest grade, basically, intervals uh, that we performed in the infill. And I think it's just a healthy reminder to everyone that, you know, SK Creek is truly a unicorn that sits alone amongst all of its competitors. Um, at the end of the day, grade is king. And you can see here in the 21C zone, seven grams over 42 meters in the 21B, 33 grams per ton gold equivalent over 22. Again, obviously very, very high grade intersections coming out of the 21A zone, 25 over 35, close to 37 over 18. And then, well, in a relative sense for us, low grade uh, coming out of the 22 zone satellite pit of four grams over 86 meters and uh, eight and a half over 48. So these are very, very robust and amazing grades. And that's why the PEA sits as it does and has such incredible economics. Yeah, and it's the grade one thing that has really caught a lot of people's eyes because, well, it is just so high. But again, this is all going into a resource and really de-risking this project. So in terms of the different areas, different locations, take us through that, please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, again, uh, what we had to do with the open pit this year was not exactly very glorious work. It was just simply infill um, and hence some of those spectacular results. So we allocated the majority of the meterage to just de-risking the open pit that we can see here in this image. 
Okay. Now that's dominantly the the 21 zones, um, as well as the 22 zone, which sits as a satellite pit off to the south. But the idea was that we would also allocate a percentage of our meterage in our budget to actually exploration. What's our encore? What are we going to do next to grow the deposit from the 3.9 million ounces that's currently on the books into you know, what could potentially be a tier one asset? So we decided that we would actually start testing what we call the lower mudstone and the even lower mudstone. Now, those that are familiar with DMS deposits, of which SK Creek is part of that family, there is cyclicity. So there's the main deposit, but we would also expect that we would see mineralization in the lower mudstone and the even lower mudstone and perhaps even mineralization below. So we did some in initial tests in the 21A zone here, as we can see by that arrow, uh, the SK Deeps, which was, which was a long shot and it worked out for us, as well as the water tower zone. So if we move on to the next slide and take a look at actually the 21A zone that we worked on, you can see here what we did in, in our first pass of drilling right at the beginning of the year was we needed to perform some infill. Again, we added to recategorize from the inferred to the measured and indicated categories. Again, spectacular grades that came out of that. But you can see that what we also did is we managed to test down into the lower horizon, that lower mudstone, which we see here in the dark gray, and then finally the even lower mudstone, which is very, very sporadically tested based on the historical database that we have. And again, we were very pleasantly surprised and rewarded. The even lower mudstone managed to produce uh, 6.26 grams per ton gold equivalent over 4.2 meters. Now that on its own is not a barn burner, and we'll totally admit, but what it demonstrates is that the exploration potential and the fertility of these other horizons meets the thesis that we were working on originally. So we're really happy with how that started off. And keep in mind, these were the first three holes that we drilled uh, in 2020. And as we all know, when you go fishing, it's not very often that you catch a fish on the first cast, which is what exactly we did. So again, it's just testament to the size of the SK Creek system and uh, its exploration potential. So Paul, how deep are those holes? Give us an update of how deep this lower mud zone and the even lower mud zone is. Exactly, yeah. Well, here in the 21A zone, so in, in this portion of the deposit, everything's a little bit shallower. So here's your scale bar of 200 meters. Uh, the grid lines on here are only 100 meters square. So we're only looking at about 100 meters down vertically for the lower mudstone, and then a couple of hundred meters or so down for the even lower mudstone. Now, if we move on to a different part of the deposit, uh, as an example, while we were in the 21A here, now we're in the what we call SK Deeps, and there's a reason why we call it the Deeps, is because we were 800 meters vertically down. We wanted to test the, the larger scale potential of the deposit. And again, we were rewarded. We got multiple zones of respectable grades and widths. Obviously, we're way below any pit limits here, so these would be underground targets. And what's nice is that we tested an area that did not have a single historical drill hole. We're probably about 400 meters vertically below the deepest underground drill hole that was historically drilled in the water tower zone. So again, on its own, this singular drill hole will not add ounces because there's nothing to corroborate it at this point, but we tested the thesis and we came out winners. I assume this is all playing into next year's plans, but I know we're gonna to get to that later. So keep on going, oh, please. Paul. Exactly, exactly. The other thing too we did is we, we tested the water tower zone. So just slightly along strike. And what's nice here is we intersected uh, in hole 295, close to nine grams per ton over 14 meters. What's interesting though, is if you look at some of the historical hits, they don't compare at all to what we actually intersected in the zone. Now, is that geological serendipity? I don't really think so, because again, the database from Barrick is plagued with selective sampling. So they didn't sample all of the mineralization that they originally saw. They were just sampling the good stuff and hoping that it would pan out for the best. This is also why they never mined this, because again, if we go back to historical gold prices, you know, 16 grams over a meter or 8.23 over 3.10 meters, 
that works out in today's modern commodity price markets, but that didn't work for them back when gold was 450 bucks an ounce US. What's also nice is the thickness of this intersection of, you know, again, close to nine grams over 14. We're entertaining the idea of repopulating the block model and seeing what would happen if we actually let the pit go down and potentially grab that. So stay tuned on those. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Paul. Keep going, man. No worries. The 22 zone, this, uh, this is just our most recent press release. We're really excited about this and I wanted to explain this in more detail. What we have here is the resource reporting pit outline. So this is not you know, the preliminary economic assessment um, mineable pit outline, right? And it was informed largely by just a few widely spaced historical drill holes, which we don't see on this section, and we intersected a small amount of mineralization. Now, because when Skeena goes in and does its drilling, we sample top to bottom because we can't necessarily visually characterize the mineralization just based on visuals, um, we ended up getting a plethora of intersections in the upper portion of the deposit, as well as some of these deeper ones down here. What's nice is that we originally considered all of this mineralization, or sorry, this portion of the deposit to be waste because again it wasn't informed by anything that said there was gold there however you can see some very respectable widths and grades you know six grams per ton over 26.28 meters this is going to be a bit of a game changer because we've already captured this in the pit and we're probably going to see a bump in uh in our global resources from this and other situations What's also nice is that this 4.16 grams per ton over 10 and a half meters, this was just us extending our drill holes beyond the conceptual pit limits. I would anticipate that with the corroborating evidence and other drill holes that are surrounding this, we'll also see an increase in the tonnage because that pit will come down and grab this mineralization. So again, it was originally informed by one, one and a half gram material. We've added mineralization in both situations. So, Paul, how important is this, the top portion here? It sounds like almost a new discovery within a already known discovery, but the grades, the widths, they're better. So how could that all improve the mining situation and also add near-term ounces? Well, again, we're, we're going to excavate this and take it anyway. Um, again, just factoring in the fact that we considered this to be waste originally because there just was no informing data. Um, this is a bonus. This is essentially gravy because now we've got cheap near surface, well, it's literally at surface mineralization um, that's only going to help to improve, you know, the global IRR and the economics of the project. Now, keep in mind, this isn't a huge quantity of mineralization right here. Like we're looking at 100 meters, but you know, all of these minor little additions that come along, not only in the 22 zone, the 21A, the 21E, all the various zones will culminate in helping us to get to a larger resource than what we currently have on the books. Okay, perfect. Let's talk regional exploration then, please. Yeah, no worries. Well, in that same uh, press release, what we also did is released uh, some of our sporadic drilling that we put out into the McKay. This is a picture of the McKay area out here. You can see it's surrounded by outcrop, but the actual guts of the mineralization is essentially just sort of a alpine meadow slash swamp. We don't have any rock to work with out there. Um, so I hate to put it like this, but it was essentially a bit of blind drilling. Uh, we had soil anomalies. We had a few uh, grab samples from select outcrops, and we decided to put nine drill holes in there and test various orientations to get a grip on what was happening. And again, we were, we were pleasantly surprised. Uh, you can see some of the grades and the widths that came out of here. Again, they pale in comparison to what uh, we would see in, in the main 21A zones over in the main deposit or even the 22. But again, this is an indication that we've got some smoke. There is undoubtedly some fire very, very close to this. And as a cursory pass and exploration, it was a technical success. We're really happy with how that works. What that also demonstrates, though, again, is, you know, we were talking about the even lower and the lower mudstones over in the near mine area. Well, we're now four and a half, five kilometers along strike. And that's the first time anybody's tested that since, 
geez, I want to say the 1990s. So still, what you're saying or what I'm getting here is that there's still a lot of growth to be had from this project outside of moving it towards or de-risking towards becoming a mine. Well, that that's exactly it. And that, that's you know, very succinctly put. Because again, if we come back to our original thesis, you know, I showed you the 21A hits. We know it's fertile. I showed you the SK deep hits. We know it's fertile. There's mineralization there. The 22 zone, same thing in that even lower mudstone. Basically, from the 22 zone all the way through to the McKay added a couple of kilometers, that even lower mudstone has never been tested. And that's something that we'll be looking at in 2021, spreading our wings and, again, growing the resource. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Paul. Let's move along. Yeah. And now here we are at SNP. Uh, SNP, again, we're so happy with what happened there this year. We ended up putting together a, a mineral resource estimate for the area, uh, depleted, of course, from anything that had been historically mined. And largely what it boils down to is a little bit more than 600,000 ounces at a very respectable undiluted gold grade of uh, approximately 13 and a half grams per ton. So right now what we're doing is we're completing a 5,000 meter resource expansion program. So we've been focusing in this area here where my cursor is, that's again, devoid of mineralized blocks because again, there's, there's no point in, you know, drilling off resources that we already know are there. That just adds confidence. We're trying to expand it. And then finally, one of my favorite areas is down here in the, uh, what we call Twin East. And the concept here is to expand the mineralization that comes down that we know about in an area that's been poorly drilled. And keep in mind, although we don't have a section here, we're actually pushing these drill holes not through the main twin zone, but also deep into the foot wall to see what may be lurking out there. Unfortunately, the labs are what they are right now, and we're, uh, we're putting priority on our SK Creek samples, um, so we probably won't see anything coming out of SNP anytime soon, unfortunately. But when we do have it, we will release it. When will the 5,000 meter program be done? Uh, that program will probably actually be complete in the next two weeks or so. Okay. All right, let's move on. Next slide, please, Paul. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's uh, one of the slides we've shown before of just basically how we're planning to, to locate all the infrastructure and whatnot in, in the conceptual pits, the waste piles, et cetera. Which is interesting, though, is I, I want to point out this lake, which is sitting up here on the top right of the screen. That's the former waste dump. That's Albino Lake. So historically, when SK Creek was being mined, any development rock would essentially get trucked and get subaqueously deposited into the waste dump. So what does that mean? Well, we know that SK Creek developed their mineralization in you know, one to three gram material, potentially some high grade rounds that may not have worked out for them. They dumped it into the lake. So what we need to do is we need to basically determine the prospectivity of any mineralization that may be occurring in that waste dump. So our plan right now is to do 33 air rotary, air rotary drill holes, uh, vertical holes, basically in a dice five blast pattern to determine if there's anything there. That'll come out to about 820 meters, but unfortunately the program is dependent on ice conditions. Um, we don't wanna risk any equipment or obviously any team members by putting them out there unless we have safe ice. So what we're doing right now is we're actually testing uh, the current ice thicknesses and we'll be driving roads in such that in the next two months or so, we can bring in, uh, again, that, that air rotary rig and uh, get some results out of here and see what may be lurking uh, in the old waste dump. So Paul, this is probably tough to answer, but in terms of a forward-looking statement, what are you hoping to find? What is the possibility here at this albino lake? Well, it's it's funny because again, if they were driving their development in the footwall uh, of the contact mudstone, which would essentially have been the rhyolite, you know, all of that material, essentially on a diluted and average basis, probably runs a couple of grams. So we know that that material is likely sitting in there. The other thing too is we've heard rumors historically from previous people that worked at SK Creek is that, you know, if they would drill into a high-grade round. Uh, which had bonanza gold and silver grades, 
but also contained, you know, extremely high mercury, arsenic, antimony uh, results with it. And if they didn't have anything to blend that down, they were in a position where their hand was forced and they had to throw it into the lake. So the idea is, again, to, I guess, dispel the myth, find out for once and for all what may or may not be sitting in that lake. So stay tuned. Okay, uh, let's look ahead to 2021 because it's going to be another busy year for the company. Uh, yeah, take us through all the work that you guys have on tap. Yeah, well, let's talk about what's actually happening in site right now. So we've got six drill rigs and we're just finalizing the phase two program. And when I say just finalizing, literally we're about two days away. What will happen next is that all of those samples will preferentially go to um, the labs and they will be expedited. Uh, essentially, we're, we're calling in all of our frequent flyer miles again, and we'll have all of those analytical results by January 31st. The reason that's so critical is because we need to get those samples into the database such that our chief resource geologist and SRK Consulting can start modeling up the resource update. Right? Now, let's talk about that. In Q1, we're actually starting, or sorry, in the spring, we're going to have an updated resource coming out to the market. Um, and we're just, well, we're expecting to see some, some better results than what we currently have on the books. We'll just leave it at that. Now, when the phase two program is completed in the next two days, we'll also be performing a 5,000 meter exploration program at SK Creek. Now, unfortunately, we can't test the far field uh, areas just because of weather, snowfall, uh, you know, helicopter support, that type of thing. So what we're doing is we've got a lot of very easy picking, low hanging fruit targets that are in the near mine environment that we've always wanted to go after, but we've been so focused on the infill and the de-risking program that we didn't get a chance to do as much as we wanted to. And then obviously that'll be released. Again, from an operational standpoint, PFS, once the new resource is complete, that'll feed into the pre-feasibility study and then ultimately the feasibility in Q4 of 2021. So that's so, essentially what uh, we're hoping to do in 2021. Hey, Paul, is the company funded for all of this work throughout this year? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're thoroughly cashed up and uh, looking forward to a fabulous year. Okay, well, you know what, Paul, uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. I will also be following up with the team over at S or over at Skeena when uh, it, when we do see some of the um, exploration results and even some of the finalization of some of those plans too. So I'll keep everybody up to date. But again, send me all of your questions so that I can get Paul back on the show or even get Walter Coles on the show to address those in a timely fashion. Paul, thank you for your time. I appreciate the update. Thank you for putting together this presentation too. I think it provides some nice color in terms of the key developments, especially last year. Right on. Well, thank